Hi, welcome. My name is Kathy Neptune and welcome to my kitchen. I'm going to share with you some uh, food, recipes, and tips on how to make your time in the kitchen fun, fast, and fabulous. And you know it's been a long spring season and summer is coming. So we're going to kind of give you some ideas and give you a summer preview of what to look forward to. And we can't do better than starting up. Look at this little beauty here. We are doing a beer can chicken. And this is so much fun. It's very dramatic. This, I'm thinking for the 4th of July barbecue to line all these up. You could do this outside on the grill and line them up like little soldiers out there. But how cute are these? And this happens to be about a three and a half to four pound um, chicken. And it's an organic one because I just like the flavors of them. And you can purchase a stand if you'd like. They do have a little, they look like a little tower. But I find if you don't get the chickens that are too large, they balance very well. They're pretty sturdy. You still have to be kind of careful on how you transport them in and out of the oven. But you're going to see how fun this technique is. And this is a pretty bird. We call this sitting pretty. And what I did, I already put the uh, beer can in here. You can kind of see on the bottom there it sets. And I seasoned the inside very carefully. And inside the beer can, I took one of the church key uh, can openers like this, these old fashioned ones, and I punctured holes all around the top of the beer can to open it up. Of course, I popped the lid too. But to make it big enough, I took um, some herbs here. I have some chives. I put in two large cloves of garlic right into the beer. I have some lemon thyme, some Mexican tarragon, and a little bit of parsley. And of course, you can put whatever you'd like in it. And I have to mention that I took some of the beer, probably about a fourth of the beer, out of the can and I poured it in a pitcher and we're going to I'll show you what we're going to do with that a little later. So you season the inside very well and then I also uh, when I mentioned spraying the beer can with non-stick spray so it makes it a little easier to take remove it when you're done cooking. And I separated the skin in the front here just to make little pockets inside and that's because we're going to put a little bit of seasoning in there. I can't mention enough. I can't say enough about how much seasoning you're going to want to use in this. Um, because it gives it all the flavor along with the beer. You're kind of like marinating from the inside out. So I'm going to take and I'm going to grab some butter from the refrigerator. And I'll show you what we're going to do with this. These are just sticks of butter. And it's important to have it cold. That's why I had it in the refrigerator. And I'm going to press it into this mixture. Now, this is a dry rub. You can see all the different colors in here. And they have so many blends that you could use. But this is a basic seasoning, I like to say. It's um, equal parts. And you can make a big container of it and keep it on hand for your summer barbecue or anytime you roast chicken. We're doing this in the oven. And it's uh, garlic powder, garlic salt, a little bit of oregano. I can't say enough how important it is to have celery salt. We don't use that a lot, but it's, it just adds a lot of depth of flavor. And then salt and pepper. And if you wanted to do a Mexican one, you can, of course, put um, some Mexican seasonings in there, even a packet of taco seasoning. So you see what I'm doing? I'm putting the butter, pats of butter that are cold and I'm putting it into the seasoning mix just pressing it down and that's an easy way to infuse some flavor into the chicken. So I'm going to tuck it in there and it's not going to go to really any place because it's all sealed inside and that's going to baste your chicken from the inside out. So we're going to put a little seasoning on here and you know what? I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil to this. Just put it on my hand. And of course, my hands are impeccably clean. And I have to say that I've had this bird setting out at room temperature for probably about half an hour. It just helps with the cooking process. 
and put a little in there. And be sure and dry your chicken very, very well. And that's what's going to give it a nice crispy skin on the outside. And it, like I said, it looks like a lot of seasoning. But boy, that's a pretty looking bird, I'll tell you. And this smells really good when it's cooking on the grill. You want to make sure and have a drip pan underneath to catch all the drippings. You know, I wouldn't put it right on the grill. I think it would probably flame up pretty good. But look at how beautiful that is. A little more seasoning on the legs. And then in here, remember I mentioned the beer that we had? So I mixed... A, a little bit of beer and a little bit of water about equal amounts and put it in there and our chicken is ready to go it's ready to roast I'm gonna put those down a little bit more and we're gonna put this the oven is preheating at 425 and we're gonna cook this for about 20 to 25 minutes and then turning the oven down to 350 and cooking it for about 45 minutes to an hour or until your thermometer reads, get an instant read thermometer 165 to 170. That's very important. And be sure to wash your hands after handling raw chicken because you don't want to cross-contaminate. So this is going in the oven. I'm going to wash my hands, get this in, and we'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. We have our beer canned chicken sitting proudly in the oven. And I put the timer on to 25 minutes before we turn the temperature down to 350. And to accompany this, I was thinking of something uh, easy to do and, and a little bit healthy. And what goes better than some roasted veggies? Because we have the oven on, so I thought this would be good. And I have some peeled carrots, fairly large, I think is the key to do this. You don't want the little baby ones. You want everything to be about the same size and to cook evenly. So as I said, these are all peeled. You know what would be nice in this too is um, a selection of what we call rainbow carrots. And you could do that. That would be very colorful. And... This crinkle cutter is nice. Don't forget if you want to know the resources for these tools, I can even order these for you. But this is a great basic in your kitchen. And then we're just, I'm putting these in a plastic bag because we're going to season these and coat them in some olive oil. So we're going to do that. And then big chunks. Uh, that's why I love this because the potatoes don't stick to the blade. And they go through and these are washed Idaho potatoes nice big chunks like this and I washed them and dried them really well so they'll roast in the oven and you can kind of eyeball it this will probably serve I would say four people easily and doing my best as I said to get them all the same size and we have a seasoning blend here Similar, I just love seasoning blends. Um, and like I said, make a batch of it and be sure to label them so you'll know which is which. But uh, I always seem to start out with onion powder and garlic powder. And I also used a little chili lime seasoning that I buy. But if you don't have it, just add a little bit of lime zest and uh, chili powder. And I always put in paprika, smoked paprika. Just gives it a really nice flavor. Flavor. I think you'd enjoy having that and um, seasoning them up. So I think that's probably how we're doing. A few more. You can't have too many potatoes. These are always good. You can, with the leftovers, you can make a nice potato salad with these. So put that in. And then a big red onion. I love these. And remember the tip I've shared with you uh, prior is that the flatter the onion, the sweeter it is. So you want to look for a nice, as flat as possible. And somebody asked me the other day how to keep from crying when you peel in an onion. And I've been using this technique for years and years. What you do is um, to avoid crying when you peel an onion is have somebody else peel it for you. And that really works well. 
I went to Onion School, so that's what they taught us. Onion University, OU. And it's a good tip if you're not fond of slicing onions. You just peel it. I can't wait to get the barbecue grill out. You need to cook this, the chicken, probably two hours on a grill at medium high so you don't get many flare ups. And I would certainly do that um, on a nice day and relax and use those extra beers that you have. And I'm cutting nice big chunks. And you see over here, I kind of kept the root of it together so it holds the form really well. See, there's just enough there to hang on to the onion root. So you get a nice big grilled chunk of onion because as I said, we want to keep them pretty similar in size. Everything goes in a bag and you can certainly do this ahead of time. Anything I can do ahead, it works for me. So Again, it doesn't matter if you have too few onions. A little extra doesn't hurt. And those go into the bag. And then I have this seasoning mix. You're going to love this with the chili lime in it. It gives it a little kick. And potatoes especially need a lot of seasoning. Move this over here. And then some really good olive oil to coat it. And these may be done a little bit ahead of time, then the chicken might take a little longer. But you can always pull them out to the side, and they'll keep pretty warm for quite a while. Look at the colors in this. This is so nice. You could add Brussels sprouts if you were doing this. That makes a nice fall dish. Artichoke hearts. It's such a great technique. I love roasting veggies in the oven. It's just so user-friendly. So put these aside. Take our sheet pan. And you want a really good, this is a nice heavy-duty sheet pan. Put those on. Spread them out. I like to do it in much of a single layer as I can possibly get. And... You can see pretty much how evenly sized they are. So we'll do that, keep them spread. And these are going to toast up beautifully. So I'm going to pop these in the oven. When we come back, wait until you see what we're doing for a great summer salad. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. We're starting on our salad to go with our beer canned chicken. And we're doing a panzanella salad here. And I have some sourdough bread. You want a really uh, textured type of bread, like a, an Italian bread, a French baguette, something that has a lot of body. And I sliced it in fairly large chunks. And I let it set overnight. And I have a grill pan on right here, and I preheated it. And I'm pouring a little bit of olive oil. You want a fair amount of olive oil on this because you really want to um, pull up the flavors. And I season this with a little garlic powder and onion powder. You don't want fresh garlic in this because it might burn. So I'm just going to put that on the, to the skillet. And spread that out. You can make extras of these too. They make great croutons for your salads during the week. And then I have a can of artichoke hearts, and I drain them and I season them. I put a little olive oil in there and a little red pepper flakes and garlic powder and onion powder again. So you see a theme going on. We're going to turn that down a little bit. And we're just going to toast these and infuse them with a little bit of flavor. I'm going to keep an eye on this.
and a griddle, like a big larger size uh, griddle, it works a little bit better. So it tends to cook evenly and um, you want to get all the um, surfaces coated in olive oil. So if you need to add a little more olive oil, you can. And that's going to be a good salad. Now, I wouldn't make too much of this because the bread tends to get soggy if you have leftovers. But trust me, with this salad, you're not going to have leftovers. It's that good. And in this bowl, I have marinating just sliced cherry tomatoes. And I sliced them in half. And look at all the juice that has come out of those cherry tomatoes. Those are going to be awesome. And in this, because we're not cooking them, I used fresh garlic. I have just a little bit of red onions and olive oil. So I marinate these probably no more than an hour ahead of time. Something you could do ahead. We'll set that aside. Now we're going to make a dressing. Very simple to do. Sometimes the, the best things are the simplest. And you're going to love this. And this is truly Italian. This would make a great antipasto. So I think that'll be good to two parts vinegar. And you know me, I get very adventuresome with the vinegar. This one here is a pomegranate vinegar, but you could use a white wine vinegar, um, a red wine vinegar, anything you'd like. That looks perfect. And make sure you invest in a good olive oil. It's so important. A little bit of salt and remember because we have the garlic in here we don't need any garlic and then just because this adds a nice depth of flavor a little bit of honey this is a wildflower honey not too much just about a, a large teaspoon I guess and I love black pepper freshly ground and this you could certainly do ahead of time. Absolutely. The more you can do ahead of time, the better. And then I'm just going to turn our bread over here. Oh yeah, that's looking really good. Look at this. Oh, that's hot. You see how it's toasting? So that's exactly what you want. That's perfect. And then our, oops, get in there. Our artichokes. Look at how nicely brown these are. See how they're all toasted and those flavors are going to come out. And add, anytime you can add flavor by toasting your uh, spices or what you're using in your recipes, it's a great thing to do. It's kind of like a bonus that you don't expect. And I would do this at the last minute because you just don't want it to set very long. But you can certainly set the bread out the night before. That's usually what I do. And get yourself a fancy dressing jar like this. They're the best. And it's a great way if you're going to transport it somewhere too that everything's in there together. Now I also have, I love the flavor of black olives. I guess this is kind of a Mediterranean theme. So we have some black olives just drained. And then I'm going to take the um, romaine lettuce because I think it's very sturdy. And I'm going to kind of slice it in ribbons or chiffonades. Not a lot, but just enough to give it some color and texture. So far, so good. And then I'm going to add some fresh basil from my garden. Believe it or not, I already have basil. And I'm going to roll that up. And that's a chiffonade as well. 
Don't forget, if you're planting your garden this summer, don't forget to include some herbs. It's just a nice little bonus. Oh, this smells like summer. You can see they're like little ribbons. So we have that. that's pretty good and they don't have to be perfect but I'm going to turn this off and let that set we've got about another four minutes to go on the clock and I'm going to wait and assemble this after our croutons and our bread has have cooled down a little bit you don't want to put them in hot because they would wilt your salad. So when we come back, we're going to start on our next recipe. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. Welcome to our tool time segment because I get so many questions and thank you to everybody for writing in with your questions and suggestions and ideas. And uh, I have always said you need good tools to build a recipe. And these are some of my favorite, too. So thank you to everyone who asked me. We have, in our dessert this evening, we're doing um, a, a strawberry filling. And one of the best things, and I'm sure you've seen me use it, and I've talked about this tool, it's a Cora. And nothing will clean out strawberries like this little Cora. I just love it and it's also good it has little teeth serrated teeth on it and especially this time of year with all the strawberries because you never buy just one strawberry you have a whole bunch of them and it's also good on tomatoes coring out tomatoes or pineapples you know those all those little nubs on your pineapples it's just a huge job I mean get these for the kids let them core out a pineapple for you I'll tell you it's um it's a great tool to have and um, this is how I do. Remember, we did the cheesecake fill strawberries, and this is the tool that I use for that because you can core out the center of your strawberries as simple as that and then fill them with a cheesecake mixture. And it's just a perfect summer tool to have this time of year. So it makes short work of that. And this segment is, this little part here is for scooping out if you wanted to seed a cucumber. Or I've even used it on pumpkins. Uh, it really cores out the center of them really well. So that's a Cook's Cora. If you'd like to know where to get one, just email me. I'll be glad to either order it or send you the information. My other favorite tool. This here is an egg slicer. But guess what? We're using it for strawberries. Put one in. You do that. And a second one. And you just keep going. Look at how quick this is. And they're all evenly sliced. And this wire pops out if you wanted to put that in the dishwasher or clear it out. And if you want to do a strawberry fan, you just do it partially like that. Lift it up and poke it through and you have this beautiful strawberry fan that goes in. So let me see, I probably won't do it right, but we'll just put that in. We'll do that on the top. So it's good for bananas, eggs of course, mushrooms. I've even done peeled kiwi with it. It's just a great tool to have. So that's it, called an Egg Slicer Plus. Have one of those in your pantry there. Just a great, great tool to have. So we have that and the Cook's Cora. And then I'm just going to take, so we don't waste a thing, and slice it. One strawberry, put it in there. It's summer. Look at how beautiful that is. And then I have my little sugar shaker. And I have confectioner sugar that we're going to use to um, garnish the top of our dessert this evening. And that's powdered sugar in there. It has a wire mesh, stainless steel. Very important to have stainless steel. And uh, it unscrews. And I mark this with confectioner sugar. I always use one for flour when you're mixing gravies so it doesn't lump up. 
And also when you're doing pie crusts and you need a little bit of uh, flour on your surface, great thing. And I also have one, and again, I labeled them all, for cinnamon and sugar when you're making toast or you need that blend to have. And they store with the cover on them like so, and you're ready to go. So those are my tools of the day for our tool time. Let me know what you think if you try them. They're great to have. And we're going to go right into our dessert. And I made ahead one of the best things you can have in your pantry or in your freezer is a puff pastry. So this here represents, they come in two sheets per package for the kind that I purchase. And they come in a sheet that is tri like folded in three places. So I just cut down each side, each strip, and then cut them in half. And you end up with six of these. And you just want to slice them through. You let them cool. And this you can do ahead of time. Be very careful. These knives are sharp. And you get this lovely vessel. They're going to look like little, I guess you could call them Napoleon. I call them strawberry puffs and they're all you can see inside we're going to fill these with a nice creamy cheesecake mixture so i'm going to set that aside and get out our ingredients that we're going to make our filling there's some milk and some whipped topping and our little miracle package of sugar-free instant pudding because I want you to be able to enjoy this and eat this. So we're going to take, I'm going to move this aside, get a clean surface to work on. And I have in here, to give this a nice, nice filling and a depth of flavor, I have in here a little bit of cream cheese mixture that I've softened. My board is kind of wet. And just about three ounces of cream cheese. And in my measuring cup, I'm going to add some heavy cream. And the recipe usually calls for one or two cups of cold milk. But I'm just going to do something a little different. And I'm going to take a whisk. And this is kind of soft. You can certainly warm this in the microwave. But I don't like to make it too warm because... You want your cold milk mixture in there. So I'm just going to put that in there and soften it up so that it combines easily with your mixture. I'll take a little spatula. Clean this down. And I wouldn't do this filling until the very end, um, right before you serve it, because you don't want them to get soggy. And if you needed more pastry, you know, you could do the whole package, use up the two sheets. But I think six is a manageable amount to do. So I could have softened this a little better, but that's okay. We'll make it work. Like using the cream cheese it gives it a nice little creaminess and this is a um, one-third percent fat free cream cheese and then you just you can see it's kind of turning liquidy add a little more of your cream and milk mixture and I think the cream gives it a lot more body along with the cream cheese mixture you could use yogurt a vanilla yogurt oops and you want to always make sure and spill some on yourself because that's sort of homemade is all about. We'll do that again. I think the cream cheese was a little too cool, but that's okay. The chicken, I can smell the garlic in the chicken roasting in the oven. Boy, that sounds really good. And of course, all those herbs. And you can use whatever herbs you have on hand. And if you didn't have any herbs, you could just use your dry rub. That's usually plenty good. pretty good and then pour in open up your packet put that in 
and then the rest of your milk and cream mixture. You could also substitute blueberries for the strawberries, but you know what I was thinking? For the 4th of July, why not make these with blueberries and strawberries? and your pastry cream, and you're gonna have your red, white, and blue for the 4th of July, which is pretty cool. And what we have in here is some whipped topping, and I'm gonna lightly fold in about a cup and a half. I don't wanna deflate it. Okay. And then just fold that in, about a cup and a half, or to, you know, so that it looks like it's spreadable, because we're going to spread these on our cooled puff pastries. And then a little bit more. You want to use about three quarters of the container. It's going to be nice and light, other than the heavy cream. But we only used about a half a cup of heavy cream. But you'd be surprised what those little ingredients will add to the flavor of this with the just that little bit of cream cheese, the light cream cheese, and the Cool Whip, and the heavy cream. That is going to be good. And I like to see a little bit of the white whipped cream so that you know there's cream in there. And then... I'm going to move these all aside so you can see what I'm doing. That there. Clean this up. And now I'm going to take out a small cutting board. So you can see what I'm doing. And whenever you're doing something with strawberries, it helps to have red accessories. So that's all ready to go. And then just to finish these strawberries, I want to show you a little secret here that I use. You know what this is? This is a combination of strawberry and raspberry jam that I took and just mixed up like this. And it makes it almost liquid. Instead of adding sugar, there's no sugar in this. Of course, there's sugar in the jam, but just to give it a nice glossy coating. So when you put it on, it looks so pretty. And I like to let the fla flavors in the strawberries speak for themselves. And it just gives it a nice kind of a professional look, if you will. It just makes it fancier and sweetens just a bit. But you don't want to overpower that wonderful fresh flavor of the strawberries. And you can see that's really all that you need. So let's start our assembly process. I'm going to put these right up front and let's see how these are going to spread. You open it up one side and take a nice scoop of this filling and of course it would be a terrible thing to have leftover filling. My goodness, what would you ever do with all these leftovers? So you put it right out to the edge. Now, if you had like red raspberries, I would just put the re uh, red raspberries individually on top. That would look very nice. And then we're going to put these right on top. I'm going to get another spoon here. I mean, you bring these to the table. This is like really eating good in the summer. Doesn't this look like summer to you? I can't wait. I hope you're all staying healthy and safe out there. It's been a tricky year. And putting that on top. Look at this on the side. I want you to get it. Isn't it beautiful? That is a good size serving. <clears throat> so let's do another one. Do that. You can certainly get the children involved in doing this. It's not really cooking, it's just assembling. I think it's great for the kids to be involved in cooking like this. It's such a nice family thing to do together. 
my son loves to barbecue. And he gets pretty good at it. His recipes are very well thought out. And that's another one. And you can see these, this goes pretty quickly. And it certainly doesn't have to be perfect, but it looks pretty good to me. You could do a pineapple one too with some coconut or mango. Oh, I bet mango would be good and you could put mint in it. Oh good, we're going to have leftover strawberries too. That's a good thing. Oh my goodness. Another one. You could do these too if you didn't want to do a puff pastry. You could do these in a nice little um, pretty glass and do like a little mini individual trifles for everybody or do one big trifle and it would look beautiful on a table. Two more to go. I think we did good on the filling here. I'm going to have just probably enough. And you don't have to worry about the strawberries. The leftover strawberries with this jam are perfectly fine to put back in your refrigerator. They'll keep forever if they last, but that's a good midnight snack if you want to have something. And then our final one, a little more. And I like to fill them pretty full. Be very generous with it because the pastry tends to be a little bit dry. And there's not a lot of juice in these berries. And I did that on purpose. I think if you added sugar to them, They'd get soggy and juicy, and then you might have a problem. But I think the jam is just enough flavor and sweetness. Well, of course, on the last one, it would spill. And on the top, we'll put that aside. And then, just to finish these off, put these here. And take a flour sugar shaker and just dust the top. I mean that looks and it's not that hard to do, right? You could do this. And you could put those on a beautiful cake stand or serve them just the way they are. Those are magnificent. I can use that word because I think they are beautiful our beautiful summer strawberry puffs. I hope you try this. This is a winner. So when we come back, we're going to assemble our salad and see how our chicken's doing. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. We're going to make a gravy to go along with our beer can chicken, and we're going to show you that in a minute. It's resting right now. But what I did is I removed the beer can with the herbs, and remember it had garlic in it, and I poured the liquid, it was still probably a third to a half of a can of beer, and I put it here in our cast iron skillet that we took, cooked the chicken in, and it's simmering away, and I'm going to make a little roux. I'm going to take some of that heavy cream and some flour, probably a quarter cup of flour, and we're just going to do this to thicken it as we need it. But there's a lot of flavor in that gravy and the juices that came out of that chicken. So we're just going to take this and you always want to put a cold liquid in with the flour so it doesn't lump up. Hopefully. And you can reduce the sauce a little more if you think you need to. I could have used a bigger bowl but what the heck. And this is going to thicken up. And we're going to cook it down, and I think that should be good. And all those lumps will come out. And 
and the beer when it cooks down it tastes very yeasty i was noticing it tastes a lot like bread a nice heavy dense bread so you can see it's all getting incorporated and just to cook the flour taste you don't want a pasty taste in your gravy but if you find that it comes out a little too thick you can certainly add a little water to this but you don't need any salt or pepper or any seasoning in it so we're going to let that set and i put my pot holder here to remind myself that that pan is very hot and you don't want to make a mistake and grab onto that. You don't want to do that at all. So this here, we're just going to turn it down and let that simmer. You can see it's bubbling up and it's thickening. And remember our panzanella salad? Well, our croutons, our bread pieces are all nice and cool, as well as the artichoke hearts. So we'll be right back and we're going to finish off our salad and our dinner. Wait until you see this. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. We're assembling our panzanella salad. And you can see I have just very little minimal. Uh, I used a romaine lettuce just to give it a green background. And look at our beautiful toasted and seasoned bread and artichoke hearts. These have, you can just see the flavor in these. So put that on the top, and then our lovely marinated tomatoes. And you can display these. I like to kind of put them along the side, just pop some little jewels of color all around the edge. And remember, that has the garlic and the onions and a little bit of olive oil. And it's just amazing how much juice that they render out. What a great summer meal this would be. And then our black olives. Those can go kind of in the middle. So if people don't like olives, you can certainly pick them out. A chiffonade of our basil is there, but just to gild the lily, a little bit of Parmesan, shaved Parmesan over the top. I would do this for a whole meal. I mean, this is just a great, satisfying meal. And a little bit of fresh basil on the top. And that is our colorful and delicious panzanella salad. And you go anywhere in Italy and they'll serve you that. And um, great lunch and dinner too. Do this for the 4th of July. This whole menu would be excellent for the 4th of July. And I'm going to go over here and get our beer canned chicken. It's all done. And I want you to see how beautiful and juicy and golden brown move this right up front so you can see by the way I have my salad in here and everybody can dress their own salad but look at these potatoes and the carrots and the beautiful brown color that you get we have the onions that are all roasted and see by keeping the the end of the onion it kept it all together beautifully charred in the oven. So you can do this if it's a rainy day and you want to plan your menu indoors um, as an alternative. It certainly works very, very well. And we made a gravy. Remember our gravy? We made a roux. And I'll set that on the side and we're going to pour that. Just drizzle this over the top lovely and creamy and rich and you can serve this on the side and people can certainly help themselves but I wouldn't put it on the veggies right yet you don't want to make all that crispiness get soggy and don't forget our beautiful beautiful strawberry puffs this menu is exquisite I hope you try these recipes for your family, your friends, for a wonderful weekend in the beach, by the pool, or just for yourself and somebody you love to share it with. Thank you all for all your suggestions and for writing in. Try these recipes. Thank you for watching and may the fork be with you.